understanding the purpose of the church, not having folk that are dedicated, sometimes we give the false impression that church belongs to us. That's why you get in conversation with folk and they'll tell you, you know, when you get there, don't, don't, don't disturb that family. And I ain't got to say that. I know I'm telling the truth. Come on, say that. I resigned from the church because I refused to pacify one family. Come on, I told them straight up. Now, y'all need to make up your mind. Is this your family church or the Lord's church? If it's the Lord's church, I'll stay here. But if it's your family church, I got to go. Because if it belongs to your family, the Lord ain't here, and I can't pastor what the Lord don't exist. I wish I had somebody else understood that. It belongs to God. Amen. It doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to you, but it belongs to God. Because, because Jesus did what's necessary to have ownership of the church. First of all, I know it belongs to him because he paid for it. Yeah, the Bible said he bought it with his own blood. Amen. Amen. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 10 that Christ went into that holy of holies and made one sacrifice for sin once and for all, set on the right hand of God, and the Holy Ghost is a witness. Jesus paid it all. Yeah, he didn't put it on layaway. He didn't sign the mortgage. He didn't say, I'll pay a living every month till I'm through with it in 30 years. He paid it all. Not only did he pay for it, but he died for it. And the hallelujah part of the fact that the church belongs to him is that one day the Lord is coming back, watch this, for his church. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward will I bring with me, and I'll pay every man according to what his work shall be. So when we talk about the dedication of the real church, not only must there be the sacrifice of oneself, not only must there be the reality of the fact that the church belongs to God, but thirdly, watch this, the real church obeys Christ. The real church obeys Christ. Look at what Jesus said in verse 19. He said, and I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now watch this. Everything that Jesus does, he does it decently and in order. First of all, he says, I'm building a church. And he says, I'm building it on myself. And then he says, I'm going to entrust you who are committed with the keys. I don't even know you don't put keys in anybody's hand. I won't say amen, somebody. You know, sometimes we're guilty of that in church. When, when, when we, we buy a building, we get in an argument about uh, who's going to have keys. And y'all always got some rascal who don't come to church but once every other month who want a key. I got one question. I know it's grammatically incorrect. What for? <laughs> you, you don't come to every communion. You come to every other communion. And got the nerve to raise hell about they didn't give me a key. Jesus says uh, that I'm going to put the keys in the hands of folk who are committed to the real church. Now when Jesus talked about keys, he's not talking about keys that we walk around hanging on us for the opening of these doors. But he's talking about keys, watch this, he says, the keys to the kingdom. Now when you talk about the kingdom, it takes you to a term that talks about God's way of government. It's God's way of doing things. That means the rules to the kingdom are already established. And in a kingdom, all you have is a king and some subjects. So we don't have to argue and fight about what's going to go on in the kingdom. All you got to do is pick up the rule book because the king has already laid it out. Come on, say amen. So what he's saying is, I'm giving you the keys, committed folk, I'm putting it in the hand who recognize God is in control. Lord, I wish I could preach this like I feel. I'm going to put it in the hands of folk who recognize God is the one who's in 
charge. I'm going to put it in the hands of folk who realize that church is about what God wants and not what you want. And a whole lot of times we got problems getting along. Because folk get away from what God wants. And we become asphyxiated on what we want. Oh Lord, I need to talk about that. We cause a whole lot of chaos. Amen. Families have split up. Won't even talk to one another because we got to hung up on what we want. And we forgot about what God wants. We come to church, can't sit by one another, look at one another, cross-eyed, under-eyed, realize who's sitting on that side and say, I got to sit on this side because we become hung up on what we want and forgot all about what God wants. But Jesus said, I'm going to put the keys in the hand of folk who are committed to what God wants. And so the keys are for the purpose of opening the door. He says, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. And this whole thing about the work of the church, I don't care how you split it up, whether you call it mission, whether you call it vision, whether you call it purpose, whether you call it full form ministry, you can name it whatever you want. It's all about getting folk in the kingdom. I need to say that again. Because we become so titled, uh, 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 asphyxiated, amen. We become, we become now so obsessed with how many ministries our church have. But I want to suggest to you that it doesn't matter what you come up, conjure up with, name it or call it. It boils down to getting full in the kingdom. Yes. Better put some Bible there. It was Jesus in Matthew 6 and 33. He said, seek ye first. Yes. The kingdom of God. God's way of doing things. Now, I told you the kingdom don't have nothing but king and subjects. So if we're seeking the kingdom, God says, if you make me priority, I'll bring in the people. Because it's only when we make him priority. But Jesus will say, if I be lifted up, I'm able to draw all men unto me. And one day we're going to realize that our programs can't draw for because so many of our programs are, are not planned around the purpose of the church. Come on, say amen, somebody. Too many things we do that God is not in it with us. So the church obeys Christ. He says, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. And so if we are spreading the gospel, if we are sharing the good news about Christ, if we are keeping Jesus at the forefront of what we do, if we are keeping him at the forefront of what we are all about, how many of you know the Lord will bless your church? The mission, we call it the great commission, go ye therefore and teach all nations. In the Greek that means to make disciples, amen, to set an example that our ways and our words and our actions would rub off on us so they would begin to follow us as we follow Christ. And that suggests to us that we got to be careful about our commitment because sometimes uh, the commitment that we show will determine what kind of disciples we don't make. You come to church every now and then? Somebody in the church want to be just like you. Come on, association bring on assimilation. You know by the company you keep, you hang around fish, you going to smell like fish. The old folk didn't have a lot of theological training. They just cut it down this way. Bang on the fellow. Yes. Uh -huh. They flock together. Folk who like to miss church hang out with folk who like to miss church. Folk who don't believe in giving hang out with folk who don't believe in giving. Folk who don't like Sunday school. They don't talk to Sunday school folk. Folk who don't like Bible study and midweek service. Never call dedicated folk and say, oh, you going tonight? They always call the folk who go every night and then. Conversation goes a little something like this. You going out there tonight? <laughs> no, I ain't going. Well, I had got dressed, but since you ain't going. <laughs> Y'all looking at me strange. I know I'm telling the truth. 
He asked us for a pledge for church dedication. Uh, you giving your pledge, child, it's rough right now. Well, I have set mine aside, but since you're not going to give yours, boy, y'all get quiet. I might get talking about it. Make disciples. Be careful of the kind of disciples you make because it's the folk that hang around you the most that you have the most influence on. Then he says, as we make them, we ought to baptize them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we ought to instruct them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Teach them. We got to get rid of this mentality that I don't want nobody to tell me what to do. Yeah. Lord, help me talk about this. Yeah, you can't, you can't do the work of the church if you don't know how to do. Somebody have declared that the only place you can come and work without training is the church. Get a new job. They take you to orientation. Yeah. Come on, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Even when you go to school, they take you through a period of orientation. But we think we ought to be able to come to church, and because of who we are and what we give, we think we ought to be able to do what we want. Yeah. But remember, it's about God's way of doing things. Yeah. Then he promised if we obey him and do what he has asked of us, that he would be with us always, yeah. even to the end of the world. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for God who will go with me, not part of the way, but all the way. Not only, not only must there be the commitment of oneself, not only uh, must the real church realize that it belongs to Christ, not only must we obey him, but lastly, I want to leave with you this, that the real church realizes that there is victory in Christ. The Bible said he charged them to tell nobody that he was the Christ. He went on to teach them about that Christ that Peter had confessed. How he must go into Jerusalem, be hated of evil men, and be put to death. Watch this. But he said, but I rise on the third day. And how many know it doesn't matter how down the church is. If you belong to Christ, God will pick you up. Doesn't matter how rough it gets. If you belong to him, he will come and see about his church. So as I leave you tonight, the question on the table is, are you a part of the real church? If I had to put it this way, I would say, let the real church stand up and be recognized. Don't get mad with me when I tell you that everybody who walks through your doors are not a part of the real church. Yeah. I have, I have, I have what I call members by association. Yeah. They have no commitment. They have no reliability. They have no dependability. But they show up regular enough to be recognized as a member of the local church. But I want to tell you tonight, when the Lord comes back, he's looking for the real church. Jesus said, uh, I'm coming for a church without spot or a wrinkle. Yes, he is. Uh, so then, it ought to be a part of the real church. The first thing that has to happen is that must be, that must be the dedication of oneself. You gotta have, you gotta have uh, what I call the Isaiah mentality. And that is, when you dedicate yourself, you won't be able to say to the Lord, uh, if you need somebody, here am I, Lord. You can count me. Yes, you can. So then, not only must that be the dedication of oneself, uh, we got to realize that uh, the church really doesn't belong to us. Uh, it belongs to God. Yes, it is. I 
I heard Jesus when he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. Yeah, Lord. And he gave us a promise that if the gates of hell would not prevail, 